Hey guys, what's up? My name's Ines, I write kissing books, and today I'm having a breakdown about this whole plotter versus pantser thing. I think both sides need to take it back a pace. Let's break it down. So in my opinion, a plotter likes to write down an outline before their story even begins. They plan scenes and they plan chapters, kind of like a roadmap, before they sit down and they do their writing uh, sessions. They craft story arcs, they build subplots, they sweat the details along the way before they even pick up the pen or put their hands on the keyboard. Whereas, in my opinion, a pantser might start their writing sessions without any plan or without any forethought. They might start with a concept and then follow their impulses. They might pause to evaluate their work. They might cycle back over their work or they might keep raving forward through the dark. So plotters have a pin at each point on a map, whereas a pantser, they feel their way to their final destination. I learned storytelling at the television writer's table. The plot versus pants divide didn't exist in the screenwriter's room because we needed a plan because we had to work together. Some people may be telling one story, another person may be telling another part of the story that connected, and we had to plan and share that plan with other people around the table. And what we discussed was pacing. What all good writers have in common is that we have a feel, an innate, a natural feel for pacing. Pacing deals with speed. It's how fast or how slow your story moves and unfolds to the viewer or the reader. If you go too slow, the reader might get bored and turn away. If you go too fast, they probably can't keep up and they might want to get off your wild, crazy, too speedy ride. It's how you distribute the information, the scenes, the plot points, the beats of the story that will ensure an enjoyable ride to your reader or in television, your viewer. When we study pacing, we're training our brain to recognize the patterns of story. Now, you can call the threads of this pattern whatever you want, but I think that the point is to strengthen your recognition of these points along the road of story. So learning pacing, observing pacing, dissecting pacing, it's storytelling exercise. It's kind of like a workout. It's muscle building for your muse. My favorite exercise equipment, if we're talking about trying to get muscles for the muse, is television shows, specifically pilot episodes of television shows. Hour long television shows have about 45 minutes to tell a complete, compelling story while contending with commercial breaks and before binge watching, seven days in between <laughs> before the next uh, series episode came out, and then months between seasons of a show. There's so much that we can learn from studying the pacing patterns of episodic stories. There's B and C and sometimes D storylines. There's ways to lead or to launch into a scene. There's ways that we wanna hook a viewer or reader between commercial breaks. There are novice characters to guide us to new worlds. There's cats to save, there's dogs to pet, there's twin sisters and secret babies, oh my. <laughs> Is there any wonder why I'm having a breakdown? If you need a good muse workout, join me as I break down the patterns and techniques of television show pacing so that you can use it in your novel writing. Now to hang out with me, you need to know the 12 basic points that you're gonna see in most television shows. The first pacing point is called the setup. Here's where your protagonist is introduced for the first time. My belief is that your number one job is to make your protagonist empathetic to your audience. Make them care about whatever it is that your protagonist cares about. That's a method that screenwriters call saving the cat. Why is it called saving the cat? We'll talk. Also in the setup, you wanna ask your story question. In a mystery, do you think that the story question will be obvious? It's who done it? In something like a thriller, the story question is obviously, why did they do it? 
in a romance, the question is, will they fall in love? But all of that is external. I want to show you how to go deeper with the story question and how to make sure it deals with the character's inner wants or needs, what their goal is to get to by the end of their story. The second pacing point is the want or the need, and there is a difference. So the story question stems from the character's goals of that particular episode or that particular book in your series. All characters have goals, even when their goal is to not want or to not want to do something. It's still a goal, but the goal is either a need or a want, and there's a difference. We'll talk. The third pacing point is the plan. As soon as your character acknowledges a need or a want, even if that need or want is them saying, I don't want it, it's still a want. The next step is for them to form a plan, whether it's a verbal plan or it's a plan that they, they write down and start immediately taking action towards, they start to move towards getting the thing that they want. Which brings us to our next pacing point, the obstacle. Because nothing worth having is gained easily, once your character takes that first step towards their goal, they're met with a conflict. Something has to get in their way. Otherwise, the story's over. There are four types of obstacles in storytelling, and we'll talk about those. <laughs> the next pacing point is one called growth. Your character will have a reaction to the outcome of that first obstacle, that conflict, and they're going to have a sign of growth. That growth could be a positive sign or it could be negative where they kind of retreat. Which brings us to our next pacing point, the setback. So your character's growing positively or negatively, but then they're going to realize that that obstacle is either a false victory or that one that they think that they have succeeded against, but it comes back and bites them in the butt. Or it's a real true setback where they just get knocked down and all oh, well, what are we going to do now? After the setback, we have a pacing point known as the regroup because you just knocked your character down whether they realize it or not. Your character is going to need a moment to regroup either by themselves or with the team that they've gathered around them. They'll either keep on the same trajectory of the plan that they initially made or they'll realize, hmm, we need to change this plan. We need a new plan. Also, if your character started out with their goal as a want, which is a false goal, this is the point where they're going to realize, hmm, that want is not getting me to my goal. I need to switch to a need. This is oftentimes where the twist happens in a show, which brings us to the pacing point, the confrontation. Now, the confrontation is still an obstacle. It's a conflict that your character is going to face. It's one of the four that I haven't talked about yet. But most importantly about the confrontation is the last obstacle. As your character has gone on this journey, they could be going through obstacle growth, setback, regroup, obstacle, growth, setback, regroup, which we call the try-fail cycle. So your character may have gone on a couple of try-fail cycles, but once they get to the obstacle, this is it. This is the end. After all the ups and downs of that try-fail cycle, getting down, getting back up, sitting down, getting back up, they're going to come to the end of their journey. And at the end of the journey, your character is going to move differently as a result of all those bumps and bruises that you gave them, but also hopefully they have learned a lesson along the way as a result of the things that you've taught them or the skills that they have mastered um, on that try-fail cycle. In order to win against this final obstacle, the confrontation, your character is going to need to behave differently than from when we first met them in the setup. This might be in the form of the five-part finale, which we'll talk about. <laughs> But moving differently, behaving differently in the silver lining leads us to the pacing point called the resolution. This is where you answer your story question and the character either achieves their goal or not. Now, there are valid reasons for you to deny your character their goal. And we'll talk about those. Once the story question is resolved, you need to close things out. So the pacing point of closure is where you tidy up any dangling participles, like subplots that you have no intention of following up on in the next installment or the next book in your series. This is also a great place to book in your story by showing the protagonists differing from when we saw them in the setup to how they're moving and behaving now in their new life after they've gone through this whole arduous journey that you've set them on. 
But that's not all. There's one more pacing point that we want to contend with, and that pacing point is called the open door. This works if you're doing series. So in episodic television writing, the story continues next week, right? So after you close the door, having resolved the story question of that particular installment, now you want to ask a new story question, which yanks the door back open. An open door is not a cliffhanger. Not It technically is, but it's really not. And it's not because you resolved the main storyline or the main story question, and you've brought your reader and or viewer full cycle and given them that whole satisfying, all the endorphins of the journey of storytelling. And then you yank open the door to start it all over again, just, just as they're enjoying their nice little endorphin rush. So your protagonist either asks a new question or a brand new character is presented with their um, problem that they're going to have to solve. Because you gave readers such a satisfying journey by, he by hitting all the pacing points, they're going to be eager to join you again to because they know that you can deliver a full and satisfying um, complete story. They're going to be willing to take that journey with you again. And then when you get to the end of the next story, guess what you're going to do? You're going to open enough, another door and you keep opening them and you keep opening them until you're not writing that story anymore. Does it sound like a lot? It's really not. I'm going to walk you through it. And guess what? We can hold hands along the way. Want more in-depth exploration of pacing? You could try out my course, Page Turner Pacing, How to Write a Binge-Worthy Novel in 21 Days at IneseWrites.com. That's I N E S. W-R-I-T-E-S dot com forward slash P-T-P for page turner pacing. Do you want to break down shows and movies with me live? Join me on my teleparty watch parties and you can find out that viewing schedule at IneseWrites.com forward slash breakdown. In the meantime, you go get them words and I'll try to keep it together until the next time we break it down. I'll see you then. Bye.